So it's week two, so next quiz is going to be on week three. So next time it's going to be week four, so it's going to be testing in arrays and keeps going like that. Uh, um, I'll explain uh, how we are going to deal with all the logic and because uh, the massive amount of information is in logic. So um, we'll do a quiz on it and uh, uh, you look at it and see how it works. 99% you won't even understand half of it because it's, it's essentially the whole logic of how to program in C in one, one page. Okay, so that's lots of information. Um, um, so I'll try to uh, keep it as simple as I can in the quiz and in, the te in, in teaching and I give you the minimum amount of information that you need to be able to program and then throughout the semester we're going to learn all the details. That's I think the best way and quickest way to go through it. So uh, uh, first I'm going to create a Visual Studio project for today's lecture and uh, again I'll do it a few times until everybody's okay with creating one and then after that I'm not going to do it I'm going to um, have it ready or, uh, to, to get open so the first thing that you do you go file new project then uh, throughout the templates that exist you go to Visual C++ you select Windows desktop and Windows desktop uh, wizard then you browse to oh, sorry then you browse to the directory that you want uh, things to get created in last session was S and N and this time is S uh, uh, Q and I'm gonna select the folder so I'm gonna call it 02 dash January 25th that's gonna be the name of the project so when I click OK uh, Windows desktop project wizard is gonna come up uncheck precompiled header an empty project and you're done make sure you do not create a subdirectory for solution in the previous window I forgot to mention that if you do that it's going to create an extra uh, uh, directory the nested directory that you don't need uh, mostly when you're at school what you do you select desktop we did it in lab right if you create it in a place and you don't know where it is the best way to find out where the solution is created is to right click on the solution and then select open folder in file explorer doing so you it will open actually where the solution is created for you in a in a file explorer so you know exactly where it is physically okay now you don't you see there is there are no fun there are no uh, there are no uh, subdirectories over here but in here in solution exposes you see there are subdirectories those subdirectories don't exist they are kept into these two files vcxproj and vcxproj filters that's for organization for visual studio to organize the files otherwise physically you don't everything's bulk in here back to uh, side by side so if you have five files over here you're going to see five files if some of them are in header some of the source files over here is not going to be it's going to be all in the same thing so this directory structure is saved in these two so when you are carrying around your projects from computer to computer the only files that you need the files that you need to carry around are the source files dot h and dot c the files that you're going to create and then these two files vcxproj and vcxproj filters for all those who have windows when windows is shipped it doesn't show you the extension of the files which is not good for a program it's good for a person who doesn't want to progr be program the, with a computer they just want to be a user of the computer so it has a type over here says Microsoft this Microsoft that the problem is that this is not descriptive enough so you need to know what is the final extension that's why you should always go to the view into the options change folder and search options in view always say always say do not hide extensions for known file op types so the, uncheck this one so it actually shows the extension because if you have dot h and dot c probably it's going to say Microsoft for both of them and you don't know which one is what yes so where are the dot h and dot c files? oh you don't have I didn't create it <laughs> when I create it you'll see it I don't have when I create it you'll see it but anyways uh, always may have that unchecked 
because you are pros. You want to know what type of a file you have. You don't, you don't trust what Windows decide your file is. You want to see the extension of the file. Is it .exe? Is it .com? Is it whatever, whatever, whatever the, the, the file is. OK? And again, whenever you are create, if uh, you are at school, every single time you do this, you have to go to Tools, Options, Open Text Editor, All Languages, Tabs, Smart, set these to 2-3, and insert spaces, and click on OK. OK? If you are at home, when you open Visual Studio, before opening any uh, solution, do this, and it's going to apply to all of them. OK? Yeah, it, it is being recorded. You can take a look at it. So it's Tools, Options, Text Editor, All Languages, Tabs, Smart, Size of the Tab, both three, and Insert Spaces, and click on OK. Yes? So this is permanent. This is only once you have to do it, right? If you do it on your own machine. Yes, if you do it on your own machine without any solution open, it's permanent. But it's always a good idea to take a look at it to see if it... The best way to know if it's done or not is this. Uh, let me just create a file. So I want to add a file to my project. So let's say I want to add a file. So I'm going to go source files, add, new item. I'm creating something new. Then I'm going to say prog.c. So I'm creating a file now, right? Okay. Now to know how it's done, enter tab few times and do backspace. If it comes back only one character, you're fine. If it comes jumps 3-3, three, three, it means it's, it's, it's tab is inserted. Okay? So make sure that you do that. You tab, anything, anything that you open, if you do that, you'll see what I mean. Okay? And so this is it to create a new uh, file. Uh, to make sure that our uh, there is one thing that I said blindly, I have to type over there. What was that? Hashtag? Oh, that's not hashtag. Hashtag define. At the end of the class, can you see this? Okay. Okay. Define. Underscore. CRT. Underscore. Secure. Oh. <laughs> Secure. I wanted to see what to go. Some classes don't detect those things. Um, what happens? Let's do it. So go ahead. I hope that you that uh, we're, we're going to make a mistake. Go ahead. Secure. No warning. Right? Okay. Is that okay? All right. Good. Mission accomplished. So I'll tell you what that cue was there for. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what is the next thing we do? Include. Uh, include. Uh, Standard input output dot header file. Standard input output, we call it studio header file. It's not studio. Actually, some people type studios, S-T-U-D-I. It's standard input output, actually, OK? And then um, I'll go over here, int, return an integer to the operating system, main, <laughs> main void, and then uh, open and close curly bracket and return 0. In most uh, uh, cases, this is the way it's formatted, OK? I'm used to this. So if you are doing it like this, if you actually put the curly bracket right at the beginning, then please keep that uh, your style. So everything has to look that way and uh, exactly that way. Yes? No warning or no warnings? Ah, don't detect that. Let's say it's not no warnings, OK? I put Q, that guy detects it. If don't put the S, yes, you do detect it. I, on purpose, I want that to be wrong, people, OK? <laughs> yes, it's no warnings. Good. That's a good thing that you know. I'm happy. It's no warnings, but let's say I don't put it in. Okay, I want it to be wrong. Okay, <laughs> let it be wrong. I want. It, I want to compile. When it com time comes, we'll see what happens. So <clears throat> that's that. All right. So that's how it's created. Now, if you don't want this file to take part in compilation, you can always remove it. You can say remove, and then remove. If you say delete, it wipes it out from your hard drive. You cannot take it back. But if you only say remove, it's removed. But if I actually go to the directory, open folder in Explorer, I'll see that the file, the file is there. But it won't take part in compilation because it's not in the uh, Solution Explorer. Now if I want to add that one, it's not a new item anymore. It's an already existing item. 
Hence, I'll right-click on it, add existing item, and prog.c, and life is beautiful after that. Now I can open it and continue the work I have done. So if I give you a file, or you give a, get a file from someplace, and you want to put it to an, into a solution, what do you do? First, you create your empty solution. Then you move the file. You open the directory to make sure you know where it is. Drag and drop the file in there. Then you include it, add it to the source files, and uh, add existing items, and you are done. Where's my coffee? I'm joking. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Are we okay with this? I have my water. Problem down to you? I made that joke once, and uh, I think students had a pact when they, every time they came, they brought a coffee. Do not do that. It was just a joke. I do that. It's just a joke. I do this foolish stuff all the time. So please ignore, okay? Ah, see, he has his coffee. All right. <laughs> Are we okay? All right. To be able to write and like, um, I, I, I know that lots of you are thinking, oh, quiz. What am I going to do is, I don't give the quiz back. Yes, I will give the quiz back. Don't think about it now. Uh, during the break, I'm going to give it to you. If I give it to you right now, I'm going to lose you for the whole class. Okay? At least I want half of the class. You have your attention, and after that, uh, I'll give it to you, and we can discuss how it works. Types. <clears throat> to be able to do any kind of process on anything, on any circumstance, not only uh, writing a program. If you want to do math, you need a paper. If you want to take notes, you need a paper. If you want to do something in your mind, you need to keep it in your memory, at least short-term memory. If I tell you 2 plus 5 is, you have to remember 2, you have to remember plus, you have to remember 5, they say plus means that, that one. Then you have to calculate the result and see it's 7. Put the 7 somewhere else in your short-term memory and then speak it out. That's the analysis of how the thought works, and that's exactly what the computer does. To be able to do any type of analysis, any type of implementation of any problem that you have to solve the problem, any solution for implementation of any problem, you need to be able to keep data in your program to be able to process it. To keep data in a program, we put them in containers. Those containers are called variables. Okay? Those variables could have different types. I can have a cup of coffee, I can have a cup of tea, I can have a cup, a cup of water, whatever, right? So the types are different. Containers can be different. You have a container that holds hot and cold. The other one, container only holds cold things. The other one is, you know, you get the message, right? So it's the exact same thing over here. We have different containers, and these containers are kept in our program, uh, are, are in our program to help us keep things, and they have types. And the four most commonly used things are character, int, float, double, remember? Okay? The four, four most commonly types, common types that we are using in, the, in, in C language, they are, they are uh, char, int, float, double. Two of them integer, integral. Two of them floating point, uh, which means it has partial parts. 2.59, 3.62. These are uh, real numbers. Uh, uh, these are uh, uh, with partials. We call it floating point. And the other one, integers. Question comes about. Character, you just said integer. That's not a character. That's, that's not an integer. That's a character. That's A, B, C. That's not integer. Lie. That is an integer. It's not. There is no such thing as character in C language. We have no such thing. C language does not understand what is A, what is B, what is C. In C language, every single out character that you can print, printable character, a printable character could be curly bracket, could be question mark, could be parentheses, could be A, could be X. Could be lowercase a, could be uppercase b. Okay? All these things are tagged with a number. These numbers, the tags that they have with a number, it's called it's their ASCII code, which means each character's ASCII code represents that character. And because a character is eight bits, we went through it at the, big, at, at the first thing, remember? One bit holds two positions. Two bit holds four positions. Three bit holds. 8 and 4, 16, or went up to 8, it holds 256 positions, which means it means from 0 to 250, 5. five. 
And because the number of characters that are, it's a match this size to the ASCII code of the character, the smallest integer is called char because it's mostly used to keep the ASCII code of characters. They are just integers. Normal, regular, good old fashioned integers that you can add two of them and get the result. Okay? So if I have the ASCII code of uh, character A in a variable called CH and I add one to it, then I'm going to have ASCII code of B. And I printed B is going to come out. So essentially, I have to tell to C language how to deal with this number. Deal with it as a character or deal with it as an integer. Capisce? All right. Everybody knows what does that mean. Why? Godfather? I don't know. Anyways, nobody knows what's Godfather, right? I'm, I'm very old. Sorry. Very, very old. All right. So, character 0 to 255, and because they want to divide it by 2, these are essentially tags that starts from 0, goes up to 250. Five, 256 different positions. If they want to use this slots to show negative and positive numbers, they have to break it in two. And because this is an even uh, number, then the zero in the middle, we have to decide which side it drops. Remember I said 10 fingers, zero to nine. If I want to do negatives, it goes zero, minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three, four. So positive is always one less than Negative. Remember that? It's the exact same thing over here. If I have 256 positions in a character, if I want to show negative numbers with it, it has to be from, from, be from minus 128 up to 127. So what happens if I add 1 to a variable that has 127? 27 is the max, right? What's going to happen? This is what happens. So. Essentially, the variables are like this. The value of the variables. This is the minimum. Sorry for, I don't know, I'm not writing it good with a mouse. And this is the maximum value. OK? So if I am at minus 128 over here, I keep going up. This is 0. Then I come down and I get to 127. If I add 1 to it, what happens? Minus 128 again. Then it goes back up. So it keeps circling. OK? And that action is called an overflow. When you exceed the size, that's why always, uh, like you will see, that when some, something happens with a positive number, you go to the or you see a gigantic negative number. The reason is that you just went through the threshold. OK? And if it's a sign number, so if the character was a sign number and I had such a thing, then the, then the value that I had was like this, right? Oh, not a good circle, but hey, this is 0, this is 255, right? If it's, if it's actually a signed integer, it would start from 0, go up to 255. If I add 1 to it, then it becomes 0 and it continues, all right? This is, yes? Which one are we talking about? On the right. On the right. Yeah, if I go to 127, I add 1 to it, it jumps to 100, minus 128. Minus 128. Eight. Because negative numbers are always one more than positive numbers. Oh, okay. Remember that. OK, I explained. 10 fingers, 0, 4, minus 5, positive 4. Remember? No? OK. <laughs> You'll see. We're going to come to it. Uh, Do we understand this? So, <clears throat> so um, for a character, I have one byte. For an integer, I have 32. Float usually has four. A double has eight. Long integer, uh, long, long integer has eight, too. Now, size specifiers um, used to be like if you wanted to, an integer to be short, you could have said short int, long int, long, long int. Long, long, long int. No, I'm joking. Only two. We can't do three. OK? Only two. So long, long int. That's it. So what happens is that short int becomes an integer that is short. It's essentially two bytes instead of four. OK? 
long yet is an integer that is long, that is four bytes, yes. and not int, yeah. that's the thing. Because short int, short by itself was a unique thing, they said the heck with it. If you put the int or not put the int, it will be OK. Like if you actually write short int something, people think you have time to, to, to waste, to put four extra characters, space and an int. You can just put short, OK? So you don't need to put the, sh the, the int over there. If you only say short, that's a short integer. If you say long, that's a long integer. Long, long, it's a long, long integer. With, with floating point numbers, the story is a little different. It, sh it actually keep keeps the number in scientific notation. What that means is that if I want to, wow, that's very small. Uh, okay, can you see that back there? You can see that, right? So if I want to say, like, I want to hold this number. OK? In scientific notation, you actually have to hold this as 1.2345678 and how many things after the decimal point over there? It's 1,2,3,4,5,6,7,8, right? So you've got to actually say that multiplied to 10 to power 8, right? I don't know how to put the power 8 over here, so let's do it like this over here. Yeah, carrot, then it implies that carrot is actually an operator, but it's not, so I'll do it like this. Oh, that's not the one. Okay, there you go. <laughs> All right, so now when you do that, what, what actually, 10 is always 10. It won't change, right? This 10 you don't need to keep. It's always 10, right? So what the computer needs to keep is this one, the significant, and the exponent. These are the two things. This is always a small number, right? That's why the small place is kept for it. And this is a bigger number. That was, that's why it's bigger. But if you make this one bigger, if you make this number bigger, OK, then you really need so many things after decimal point. You don't care about the rest. That's why these numbers are never precise. What it's, this is not exactly what the computer does, but computer kind of keeps it uh, like this, like it holds 1.23456, let's say, multiplied by uh, uh, 10 to power 8. And as a result, this 789 will be uh, rounded, whatever you call it, thrown away. That's why they are never precise. Floating point numbers in computers, they are never precise. You can actually do something like this. You can say, for example, double x is equal to 2 semicolon. That's it. And then check the value of x, and you'll see it's actually 1.9999999999. Because it loses that little bit thingy. So they are not always precise. Be careful about it. Now, that's where the name double comes, OK? Float, it stands for floating point. But they said the precision is too low. You, we, are, you, we are losing too much precision in here. Then they made it a little bigger. So the part that they hold the exponent in it, they made it two bytes. And the, whole, the part that they hold this one, they made it actually six bytes. So it became two more precise, twice as much. That's why they called it double precision. So double stands for double precision. Long double, it means very precise, OK? But again, see, this is still not precise. You can never compare two double values for equality and be 100% sure that although logic dictates that the values are the same, the condition checking will actually be successful. You have two values. And when you walk through it, the logic dictates that they are both 1.345. 
But when you check them for equality, you see the computer says it's not the, the, prog the, 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 the program running, it says they are not equal. When you look closely, you see one is one, three, four, five, the other one is one, three, four, nine, 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 nine. That minuscule amount of inequality triggers not equal. So you got to be careful. Because of that, always double and floating point values are checked with uh, subtracting the values and look at the difference. If the difference is smaller than certain value, then they are okay. That's what they say. Okay, that's the, so the precision is not as easy. If you want to check two values to be equal, that uh, can always lead to disaster. Are we okay down to here? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Just an example. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. I'm not. I, I'm not saying even that example is hundred percent correct. All, all I'm saying, all I'm saying that keep in mind when you're dealing with double and float any floating point number, you lose pieces. Although very small, but you lose pieces. You've got to be careful, especially when you're doing accounting programs. OK, so at the end, you're going to lose a cent. Oh, a cent, who cares? The guy has $2 million. When you have 2 million transactions happening, 2 million one cents, that's what? OK, that's lots of money. Got to be careful. All right. So. Whenever you want something to be, to be kept, because be, be, whenever, whenever you want something to be kept, uh, it, whenever you want to keep using something, and that thing is too big to be written over and over, you can always put it in a variable. Something like, say, pi. That's pi, right? But you don't want to keep typing that every single time. So what you do, you put that in a double value, but a, a double variable, and you call that a pi. So double pi equals to that one. Problem is that some idiot, that is usually the programmer itself, may change it. But that is not a changeable thing. That's a constant value. If you want a variable not to change ever, make it read only, you can make it a const. Make it const double pi is equal to something. Like if you're writing an accounting program, tax is a good candidate to be constant because it never changes unless government does something. And you know what I mean? So it's a very big, so rarely happens. Or anyways, anything like that force of gravity, if you want to put 9.8 something, then, uh, then 9.8 is always constant value. Then G has to be a, a double that is always constant. You say uh, constant double G is equal to 9.8. OK? So that's const. So anything you want it to be read only, you use const for it. We talked about integral types. We know characters, negative values. If you want to know more about how negative variables are kept, are kept go to tools complement notation uh, and try to understand it, how it works. I'm not going to waste the time. Um, if you want really to know it, come to the office. I'll explain it to you. One by one, I'm not going to waste the time of class. Okay, floating point theta, we talked about it. Value ranges, we talked about it. As you see, you see, this is the minimum of a short minus 32768, and the other one is 32767. The positive is always one less than negative. And who can read, read this one? Can anybody please try? No. Anyway, so that's zero seven, and that's zero eight. There's always one extra. All right. Uh, with floating points, they don't bother telling you how many digits you can write in this thing. They say the significant could be up to 15 digits, and the exponent can go up to minus 37 or positive 37. That's a big number, OK? 37 zeros in front of it, OK? 300, 307 zeros in front of it, OK? Are we OK with this? Are we OK? Down to here? How do we declare variables? We declare variables like this. We put the type first, character. Then we mention what is the variable name, uh, relative, uh, 
name that actually goes with the variable. Uh, we can either use it later on and do something with it, or we can set it to something if we want to. Okay, what I was talking about, a character, and what does it mean to be a character? A over there, CH is a character, is a character variable holding the character A in it, correct? Right? So if I want to print that, we know that the uh, uh, function that is, using, uh, uh, is used to print it is called printf, stands for print formatted. Print formatted's first argument is a string that keeps the format of whatever you want to show. So you put the string, and in here you put whatever you want to print. How do we do that? We write what we want to print, and wherever we want the values that, are, that belong to variables to show, we put a placeholder over there. So I want to say the character is percent %c. C is a format specifier for characters. Percent %c is its placeholder. So it means this is going to get printed, the char is going to get printed, and then this is going to get replaced with whatever I put right after. So I want to print the ch. I'll put ch over here. Okay? Then I'm going to say, and the ASCII code is, I want to put percent %d now because I want to show what is the code inside. So as you see for both, I'm putting ch. So I'm saying ch, show it as a character. ch, show it as an integer. The first one takes the ASCII code of CH and shows what is its shape. The second one shows the ASCII code as a number. And as a result, that happens. Uh, it's a good idea to put a backslash and to go to new line afterwards. So that's escape sequence for new line. And if I run this beautiful program of mine, Control F5, if you create the solution the way I told you, Control F5, X compiles and execute your program without debugging. And if the program ends, it keeps the screen open, showing press any key to continue. If you don't create it the way I do, Control F5 starts the program and closes it immediately. It doesn't give you a chance to take a look at it and see what it is. That's why I say you have to do this, you have to do that as a reason for it. So Control F5, which is essentially debug and start debugging, that's F5, start without debugging, that's Control F5. We're going to talk about debugging and all those good stuff in the weeks to come. So if I run this beautiful program of mine, three years later, it gets compiled, and you get all the beautiful messages over here. And at the end, it runs, and it says, the char is A, and the ASCII code is 65. Are we OK with this? Now, I can add one to, to the value of CH. So I can actually say, which brings us to expressions. Expressions in uh, C language work in a different way. In mathematics, if you write something like this, they're going to laugh at you. Say, what the heck are you talking about? If you do like that, I'm going to say, OK, CH. Oh, sorry. I'm going to say, CH goes with CH. I have 0 equals 0 plus 1. <laughs> right? That's math. We are not doing math. This is computer programming. What does it mean? That doesn't make sense. It doesn't work that way. In computer programming, the assignment operator has two sides. It has a right side and it has a left side. The right side is first evaluated. What do I have in CH? What do I have in CH? What do I have in CH? 65. 65, you bad people. 65, OK? So I have 65 in that one, right? So 65 plus 1 is what? 66. So I have 66. Now that the evaluation is finished and I have what is at right side, assignment has started its work. That is putting the value of six, putting the value 66 inside CH. Hence, CH becomes 66. So 1 is added to it. All right? And if I do something like this, then what's going to happen? It's going to print capital B. Uh, bravo. Exactly that. So if I actually print that thing again over here, uh, 
All right? Now, if I run it, you're going to see it says the character is B and the ASCII code is 66. Are we okay with this? Questions? Suggestions? Objections? All right. So, what I do, I'm going to call this one 01 dash. variable variables dot C and it's saved over there then I'll open the next one so I keep saving stuff with new names when you're going on github looking at the code you will see that it says zero one yada 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 that's the first thing that we talked about then zero two to the next one so you can open these and actually look at the code and see what I was talking about to kind of review things yes What comes after A? What is the code of A? What is the ASCII code of A? What is the, it's 65. If ASCII code of A is 65, logically, what is ASCII code of B? 66. Hence, if I add 1 to 65, it will be? So when I say print the character of 66, what's going to get printed? B, there is nothing automatic about it. No, if I can, I can do this, I can say, I can say, I can say this, I can, I can go 10 characters further, and if I run this program, if I can type it, of course, how do I print, oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. So I can bet that L is 10 characters after B. All right? Perfect. Thank you for the question. Should I add this one to the previous one too? OK, I'm having a little bit of unresponsive, un unresponsiveness in class. I have to make the thing a little more interesting, I guess. OK, so I'm going to put this one over here, save it just to have it for future. All right. Are we okay down to here? All right. Multiple declarations. Um, we'll come to it soon. Not yet. Um, yes. So I know that for characters it's percent C, right? So mm -hmm. integers is like percent I and so does percent. No, no, percent D. It's not percent I. Okay. Percent. It's percent I is acceptable, but Go with percent D, please. OK. So that's how, to, how you do output. Again, the first variable goes to the first placeholder. The second variable, whatever it is, goes to the second placeholder. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. The second one can be anything else. Are we OK with this? Now, this is output. We do the exact same thing for input. So say I want to write a program that multiplies two numbers. OK. If I want to do something like that, what do I do? The first thing that I'm going to do is uh, thinking about it. <laughs> okay, so if you want to actually write a program that does something, you have to actually put yourself in the user's shoes. Assume that you turn on the program and you run a program that is supposed to multiply the two numbers. What would you like to see first? Enter two numbers. Very good. Enter two numbers. So first, you have to you have to talk to the, to the user behind the computer. Because the user, no matter who it is, is the dumbest person that ever walked on Earth. Even if it's you testing your own program. OK? That's what you have to consider. That's why we say we call foolproof programs. That's how it works. It's not a bad name. Actually, they say foolproof. That's the thing. Write a foolproof program that does this. Because everybody's a fool. OK? You have to have that as a default of the system. OK? So the first thing I'm going to say over here, printf. Please enter, what did you say? Numbers. What numbers? What type? Thank you. So we have to say integers because if you don't say integer, the user may enter 2.56 and everything's going to go down the drain. Okay, we have to be specific. Remember, okay? Please enter two 
integers. <laughs> Believe me, I would have write using digits because <laughs> they're going to write 25 with T W N T Y. <laughs> they're going to write it like that. Believe me, they do. Anyways, so please enter two integers. Or I'm going to make it better. I'm going to say please enter two integers to multiply. To multiply. And then I'm going to go to new line. And then I'm going to print another statement saying printf first number. Now I'm going to ask for it. See, the first one goes to new line. The second one, it just stops over there. So it's going to actually print it. And the cursor is going to stand blinking right in front of this, waiting for the second number. This is the time now to do input. Printf's sister's name is scanf. Scanf works exactly like printf. The format is exactly the same, but it's in reverse order. What happens is that printf gets and prints, scanf reads and inserts. It's the exact same way. So I want to read an integer. Where is my integer? I don't have one. Let's make one. So int, what do I call it? Num1. Num1 is a C programmer's thing, OK? Be descriptive at the beginning, just because you're going to forget what the heck is going on. So I'm going to actually call it first number. OK? Something like that, all right? And then I'm going to put over here integer, second number, but your name was perfectly OK, num1. You can put in one digit after that. Second number, OK? And then at the end, I need a place to hold the result in. I'm going to go result. Are we OK with this? That's a new version of result. <laughs> Result. Result. OK. Anyways, are we OK with this? <laughs> All right. I'm going to pause the recording over here and tell you something about this. No one knows what I said when I paused it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah. All right, so scanf. Is printf sister. So scanf scan formatted. It really scans, OK? What do I read? I'm reading an integer. So I'm going to say percent %d. I'm reading an integer. What is the integer that I'm reading? Now, attention, attention, achtung, whatever you know. Please pay attention now. I'm going to use buzzwords, expressions, things, names that doesn't sound familiar. I want you to say it the exact same way from now on. Although if you don't understand what the heck that means, but use the buzzwords. You keep saying the buzzword. When the time comes up and you know what it is, you're going to go, aha, now I know why I was talking like that for past month, past 30 days. If you don't mention the things properly as what they mean, then understanding it will be difficult. I'll explain why. So scanf. Read an integer and put it in, now listen to me, address of first number. Oops. If anybody says, calls that thing an ampersand, I'm going to kill him. No ampersand in this class. We don't have such a character. OK? That is called address of whatever. Why? Because the sky is high. Ta-da! OK? Give you some kind of a metaphor on that thing. If you want to send a letter to me, what do you do? You put Vardad's address, which means that envelope goes to Vardad, to address of Vardad, so I'll receive it, right? It's the exact same thing. Scanf needs first number's address to put the value in it. To know, it needs to know where it is. That's why it is. But when you are printing something, it doesn't need to worry because it's getting the value. Because it's getting the value, it doesn't need to know where it is. It just says, give me the value. You give the value. But if you want to put something in it, you need to know where it is. That is not rational at all. Absolute BS, but let's assume that that was a good reason for it. Are we OK with this? So remember, scanf receives the address of variables to put something in it. Printf doesn't need the address, just the value is enough. Are we OK? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? Sold. OK, let's read the second one. Now I want to get second number, so what I'll do, I'll go printf. Second number, copy and paste, very bad thing to do. Because sometimes 
you go, okay, I did it, and you forgot to change, you forget to change the first, the second, and the second one, and then with the, things got to go bad. Okay, so not a good thing, but I'm lazy. Sorry about that. Second number. <laughs> How do you write second? Second number. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm an EFL person. That's English. English is fourth language, so I'm going to do bad things in class. Please correct me, like the secure with Q that I was talking about over there. Are we okay here? All right. And now we have the first number and second number. Now we can do the math. Now we can actually say result is first number. Stupid compiler. OK. <laughs> result uh, first number multiplied by second number. Sec oh, by the way, when you are typing something, start it. And when you get up to the point that it actually can find out what it is, it highlights it for you. If you press tab, it completes it. Look. OK? That's a good thing. It is called IntelliSense. It helps you not to make spelling mistakes. It's better to have a classroom in front of you, of course, to, to correct your mistakes. But hey, all right. Are we OK with this? All right. Now that I have it, I'm going to say printf uh, result is, and I'm going to put percent %d. And I do not need to uh, pass the address because I'm printing. So I just got to say, that's the result, and I'm done. OK? Now, if you want to be polite, you maybe want to say goodbye. I made that ugly mistake over here. What is the ugly mistake? For what? Okay, okay, that's not what I meant actually, but it's okay. Walk through it prop. I want you to see, I want you to picture what's the output before I compile it. First line, it's gonna say print, enter two integers, and goes to new line, correct? Just a second. Second line is gonna say first number and a space and shows the cursor. User enters it, hits enter, it goes to new line, print second number. Stands over here. User enters second number, hits enter, calculates the whatever it is supposed to be. Then says printf, the result is, prints the result out. A new, new line in here. It would, it would say the result is 20, and immediately it attached to 20, you would say goodbye. That's not good. And worse than that is that when I compile this, I'll see, oops. Error. What's the error? The error is scanf. This function or variable may be unsafe. Consider using scanf. S instead to disable blah, 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 blah. to disable the deprecation. Use secure CRT secure. No warning. Z. Okay. That's the thing that I wanted to put the Q, but now it's S over here. Okay. Okay. So that's the right one. Why it did not trigger over here? Because there was no risk for anything, scanf is the unsafe one, but I'm going to still put this one over here. Are we OK? Now I'm going to compile and run it. And three years later, first number is going to be 10. The second number is going to be 234. And the result is 2340. And that's the outcome of multiplication. I could even actually give a better result out of that one and print out of that one, I could actually say uh, printf percent %d multiply by percent %d is percent %d, and then go to new line. So it would be something like first number, oh, first, come on, first number, and then second number, and then the result. So it's going to be kind of mm, a little more fancy, better than that. So, so now I'm going to have 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to have 5, 6. So it's going to say this multiple of that is this, OK? Or equal to whatever you want to call it. Are we OK with this? We're going to come and see and that, that you can actually ask Visual Studio to do this step by step for you so you can see how it works. How it does that, you can actually go through it and say, I want things to happen. Oops, sorry. 
Not like that. Stop. You can actually ask it to go step by step. So I can actually do it like this. See, I'm resizing it like this. You see that yellow arrow over there? You see that yellow arrow over there? That is where the execution is. When it comes over here, now what is the value of first number? Garbage. Second number? Garbage. Third number? Garbage. Then it says, please enter two integers. You see? Then, so step by step it's running. It says first number, scan. When it scans, it waits for me over there to actually do the scan thingy. Now I'm going to say 10. I hit enter. Now if I look at first number, the value is 10. So it actually walks through the program for you step by step. You can go through it and see how it works and everything. You can tell it where to go and stop. I can say, okay, run it right down to here and wait for me. So I'll just put the stop sign over here. Then I'm going to say, right, you see, continue. I'm running it. Now it's going to say over 10. So the next one is 3, 4, 5, 6. Hit enter. It stops right at that stop sign. Now I can check. Okay, result is... That one, first number is this one, second number is that one, and so on and so forth. Are we okay with this? Pardon me? Oh, uh, debugging. <laughs> okay. It's uh, essentially all the things that I'm doing, they are in a debugging session. If you debug over here, it says build solution. Oh. Um, so, why is it not showing where? Oh. So if I go debug, it says start with debugging. You see that? Start debugging. Start without debugging. That was control F5 that I told you. 11, F11, step into, F10, step over. Step into means if you want to see how printf works, you can go actually into it. It actually goes into function printf in library and walks through it for you. You don't want to do that, OK? Step F10 is what you're going to use the most at this moment, which is essentially run each line and keep going to the next one. So I just, at the beginning, start, press F10. It runs and stops at the beginning. The next F10 goes to next executable, and the next executable, and next executable, and next executable, next executable, and then it keeps going like that. Are we OK? All right. So now we know input and output and a little bit of expressions. So um, I'm going to save this as 0, 2, I, O, and calc, calc, dot C. Now, OK, let's go to the next one. Calculations are done as exa exactly as I mentioned to you. Um, um, there is a thing that you need to know. When you write a constant value, like i is equal to 6, what is that 6 that you're writing? That 6 is a value, right? Could be an integer if you want to put it in a long. Maybe you want it to be a long. This you will never use this semester, but it's good for you to know. If you want the literal value that you actually write to be of a specific type, you can actually do that. If you are saying long ABC, so the name of the variable is ABC, or long account number, or long uh, balance. So you have a long uh, variable called balance, and you want to put zero in it. Okay? So you say long balance equals to zero semicolon. If you want that zero, compiler will take care of it, by the way. If that zero is an integer, the, uh, ba the, the balance that you have is a long. So it actually transforms that zero, integer zero, into a long zero and puts it in a balance. This is called casting. It actually casts it temporarily to the new type and puts it over there. So you're OK the, up to this level. When you are going to higher levels, you need that. You see that you sometimes really need to do that, but not in this class. So, if you that if you wanted that zero to be a zero of type long, you could write zero capital L. That means the zero that I'm writing is a long zero. 
The compiler knows it. It's going to fix it. Or if it was a long, long, you put two L's over there. If it was a float, you put F over there. If it's double, you don't need to put anything. Anything that you put with decimal part, uh, digits after decimal point, it's a double by, by default. If you want to force it to be a float, not a double, that's that one. If you want it to be a long double, and so on and so forth. Okay, So uh, you, you'll see. You, you get the message, right? Uh, but you don't need to do it. If you want it to be, uh, if you want the number to be in hexadecimal, you start it with 0x. So if you want to, um, you, you have, anybody, anybody knows what is hexadecimal number? No, no, no. Really knows what is a hexadecimal number. So you don't need to know about this. Forget about it. We'll talk about it later. When the time comes, I'll explain to you what it is. We don't need to know it then. This is about constant that I was talking about, constant pi. And as you see, it's a float, 3.14159. Okay. Um, so it's a constant. We make sure that pi is read only. So it would have been nicer if they actually called it read only, I believe, personally. Because const and variable with paradox. You cannot say, I want a variable that is constant. If it's a variable, it means it varies. So it's not constant, right? So although it doesn't make sense, but that's what it means. So it's a read-only variable, a variable that you can read from. You cannot set it to anything. You can initialize it to something. That's when we come to the next thing that I want to explain. <clears throat> if for any reason I wanted to over here set the result to 0 like this, this is called initialization. Now, I want to remember this carefully, OK? You're going to need it four months from now when you go to OP244, OK? When you, initial, when you set value of a variable at the moment of creation, that is called initialization. I am initializing result to 0, OK? But if I did it like this, if I say int result, and I say result, set to 0. Line 7 and 8 and line 6. For us, they're the same, right? The final outcome is the same. I'm going to have a variable called result, and it has 0 in it, right? But there are two absolutely different things. The first one, the integer will get created, and right at the moment of creation, poof, it comes to life with a 0 in it. The second one, it will first get created with garbage in it, then after garbage is in there, you overwrite the garbage with zero. This one is called setting the result to zero or assigning result to zero. The first one is called initializing to zero. So that's why those people who I said create a double or create an integer and initialize it to this value, they did it in two lines, you got one mark. It means you have to fix it. You have to initialize, not set. Are we OK? So this is setting. This is initializing. Zing. OK? So OK? And I'm going to save that as 0, 3, setting, and initializing. Let's see. OK, two different things. Remember that. OK, next. <coughs> Character constant. So now you know what single quotes are. When you have something like this, when you have something like this with two single quotes and an A like that, that's the only, the only reason for those single quotes is that we don't have that good of a memory. If we knew the ASCII code of, of every single character, though, those operators wouldn't exist. Whenever you, whenever you don't remember the ASCII code of a character, you put two single quotes around it. So single quote A, single quote, literally means 65. That's a number. It's not a character. 
You just, because you don't have the capacity to remember the ASCII code of everything, that's why we have the single codes. Got it? Are we okay with this? All right. So it would have been the same if I did this. Exactly the same. Absolutely no difference. All right? Are we okay? You know this slash slash and st slash star slash asterisk? for commenting, this is what you need to do. You have to comment every single thing that you're doing. Because when you're coding, and then you go get a coffee and you come back and you look at your code again, you don't believe that you wrote that thing. You think somebody else wrote it and went and then changed your code. You will forget everything. Every single piece that you see, it gets a bit more complicated than it's supposed to, or it may have a little trick in it, or somebody may not understand it immediately, comment it. The m biggest problem in programming industry is the fact that programmers don't comment and document their code enough. Please, let's change that, okay? Comment your stuff. If you have a block, start it with slash star, write everything, and then star slash. Whatever is between the block will not get compiled. It's just the documentation, okay? If you want only one line, two slashes. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely nothing. Completely ignored. Compiler just throws it away and compiles the rest. It ignores it completely. Are we okay? All right. Where was I? Escape sequences. When you write, when you write string literals, what is a string literal? Series of characters back to back, an array of characters back to back. You want to show it as a string because C has no capability. C doesn't understand what is characters. You know that, right? C doesn't understand what is a string either. String means series of letters back to back. It's literally an array of characters back to back. Okay. So to actually identify this, they put double quotes. So if you put double quotes and you put series of letters inside, that becomes a string. That is the first thing that you pass to your printf. Okay? Because some of the characters are not printable, they have escape sequences, which is kind of a way of indicating what you want. Okay? So for example, if you put backslash A, your computer says bing or boop or whatever the default beep is of your comp is your computer. Whatever it does, it does a beep. That's what it does, OK? If you put backslash B, it moves the cursor one to back, which means the last character you wrote will be overwritten, OK? If you have an F, you don't need to worry about it. It's for printf. It's form feed. Uh, in college, in university, long time ago in Galaxy, far, far away, when uh, I was a student, we used to write our programs, and we had to print them out and wait for printout three days later to see if our for loop worked or not, for example. So one of our students, by mistake, one of the students put backslash F inside the printout instead of backslash T. And the loop was going like 300 times, so they actually gave him 300 pages of blank paper because it keeps feeding the thing. So that's for printer, form feed. It goes to the next line. New line goes to the beginning of the new line. So some, some compilers and environments, when you get to a new line, it just comes here. <laughs> it doesn't come at the beginning. But some actually come beginning at the, and the first. That's why we have backslash R. Backslash R brings the thing, carriage, to the beginning of the line. So it brings the cursor to the beginning. So if you just do backslash R, whoops, come to the beginning. If you go backslash N, most likely it goes to the next line and beginning. But some of them are interpreted in a different way. Backslash T, horizontal tab. The cursor will jump to next tab position. If you are on position 4, it's going to jump to position 8. If you are on position 7, it jumps to position 8. If you are on position 1, it jumps to position 8. Because 8 is the position for the tab. As soon as it passes 8, it jumps to position 16. Because of that, we do not like tab characters. Because the size is different from platform to platform. Okay. 
vertical tab, forget about it. Backslash, uh, it's kind of essentially you're going vertical tab to skipping lines, but uh, don't need that. If you actually want to print the backslash itself, what do you want to do? Because it's not without, so you put a backslash. Backslash, backslash, prints backslash. Backslash single code, prints single code. Backslash double code, prints double code. Backslash question mark, prints question mark. All these are gone through. Percent C to read the character, D to read and print uh, a, an integer, F to read and print a uh, float, and LF to read and print a double. Space holders, we call it. In here, they call it format specifier. They are literally placeholders inside the format string. So format specifier. This, I believe, is the format specifier. Together or together is the placeholder for it. Okay. Expressions, we talked about it. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> and that is where I'm going to end the lecture with. And it's a very complicated one, too. So we're going to talk more about it when we come to logic the next day you're coming in. Hmm. I should have gone for a break. So <clears throat> what is an operand? Can who can tell me what is an operand? Operand? Pardon me? That's operator. The operator is the operator use plus, minus, division, subtraction. Those are operators. Assignment, operand. No, that's an operator too. Operand is what an operator operates on. <laughs> so if I say 2 plus 3, I have two operands, 2 and 3. And plus is the operator. Are we clear about this? Every, everybody's okay with this? All right. We have two types of uh, two types of operator in C language: binary and unary. Okay. What is a binary language and what is a unary language? Uh, bi binary uh, operator and unary operator. This is a binary operator. The multiplication. It has one and two operands and two sides. It has two things. You see the assignment operator? That's a binary operator. It has one operand at right and another operand at left. Right? And it has its, they all have their own uh, uh, characteristics. The binary operators could have side effect or have no side effect. When you multiply first number to second number, are they change after? No. That's why. The multiplication operator, the, mu the multiply operator, doesn't have side effect. But assignment operator, after it's done, any of the operands changed? Yes. It, it side effects the last, left one. Its job is to get the right and put it in left. So the value is left, of left is changed. OK? So these, these, these are the binary operators. We have, we have uh, uh, unary operators, too. I can say over here. I can do something like this. I can say integer a, integer b. By the way, in my class, you're not allowed to do this. You can define three integers like that. No, in my class, you can't do that. Know that you can. I'll give it to you walkthrough in the walkthrough to you so you can debug it. But when you are writing each, um, you can do it in test, but when you are doing any Homework. Every single variable must have a type of its own. Why? Because I'm the boss. Every single company has a weirdo that forces their rules to others. I'm playing the role of the weirdo here now. Okay? So integer B, integer C, which means I have three things over here. Now I can say A is set to, now if I actually set these to initialize these to something, so A is that one, and B is 20. Now, if I say C is set to minus A, minus over there is a unary operator, an operator who has only one operand, not two. OK? In C language, we have several, uh, all the mathematics thingy that you have about operators that 
that you have, we have it over here too, okay? There's no uh, need to explain to you how multiplication and stuff works. And it works exactly like math, which means if you have such a thing, if you have C is set to uh, A multiply uh, by, or uh, let's put it this way, A multiply by B plus 3, if I have something like this, first this is going to happen because that's how math works. Division and multiplication happens worse first, no matter what you do. So those people who first added these two and then multiplied to that, that's wrong. If you want to enforce that, we have parentheses for it. And that's what it is. That's how it works, exactly like math. Are we okay? Every single operator in C language returns something. There's no exception about that. Yes? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Can you put the A right next to the bracket and it would still be the multiplication? No, no, no. Like there is no such thing. That's, it's, that's algebra. This is not, this, that's not C. In C language, you have to specify multiply. Okay. okay. Some people even do this because you do that in math too. Yeah. No, we don't do that here. I know I did that on yeah. my... Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you can't do it. So are we okay with this? Now, the next thing, each operator in C language returns a value. That's how it's designed. That's why I can say A is set to B. And then I can say C is set to whatever they're set to. Because each operator returns something, what is assignment's job? Gets the value of B and puts it in A, right? And the outcome is that value. And that passes to the next one, and next one, and next one. That's why you can do that in C. So essentially, B, A, and C are set to B in this case. Are we OK with this? We have logical operators in C. Log uh, sorry, uh, relational operators that compare values. With relational operators, the result and outcome is all either truth, truth or falsehood. So one of these two. If I say A greater than B, what is the statement, true or false? False. False, false in C language is zero, literally. It's not false, it's not incorrect, it's not bad, it's not no. It's the number zero everywhere. So essentially, if I say C is set to A plus A greater than B, and then print C, zero is going to get printed. OK? If I say C is set to A less than B, that's a correct statement, correct? Because it's a correct statement, it's going to be one. When C gives you the result back of an operation, the result uh, the, the, the outcome of true is always one. But when C wants to examine something to see if it's true or not, you'll find out what I mean later. If that's the case, then zero is false, and anything but zero is true. So if C wants to examine something, 2.35 is true. But if you have A greater than B, and if that's the re that if that thing is true, then it always gives you one. Okay, remember that. So, you had a question. Was a question anywhere? Okay. 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 All right. So next thing. Uh, so and we have we have less than we have greater than. These are the things that we have. We have less than or equal. We have greater than or equal. Greater than or equal. We have uh, attention to this one, is equal. This is not setting. So if you put two assignment to operators, it means, are these two equal? That's what it means. So it returns one or zero. That's not assignment. And we have the exact opposite to say C is equal to, n C is equal to A not equal to B. So in this case, this is C false. That is zero. This is C one that is true. Yes. It's not going to print anything. If I print them, it will. So if I say print C, it's going to, bad boy you are. <laughs> print F percent D backslash N C. OK. Mm. 
Now it's going to print every one of them. So if I run this beautiful, oh, 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 if I run this beautiful program of mine, three years later, please don't have an error, please don't. Have, okay, this is what you're going to get. Zero for that one, zero for that one, 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 zero, okay? Are we okay down to here? All right. So uh, one last thing that we want to talk about is logical operators. Logical operators examine two things together to see if they are both correct with an AND and an OR. What is an AND? So I can say C is set to A greater than B and A not equal and D not equal to come on you can type it E okay so let's have a D and E over here too for heaven's sake int D uh, 30 int E 40 I'm just putting some values in them okay you can do that again when you see two ampersands you call it and you don't say ampersand, ampersand, okay? That's an and. And a single ampersand, way above your pay grade, okay? Or knowledge level. That's you're going to learn in OP345, okay? So single ampersand is called bitwise operator. You don't want to know it, okay? So if you have an ampersand coming beside the variable, it's address of. When you have two of them together, it means logical and, which means this. So if you have a logical and, essentially what it means is You have a switch over here and a switch over here. You have a light bulb here and you have a battery here. For the light bulb to go on, these both switches must be closed, right? Close means one. So if they are both true, the circuit passes, the light goes on. That's AND. The only way the light bulb can go on is for both statements to be true. So A greater than B and D let not equal to E, if A is greater than B, that is not. And D is not equal E, that it is. So it's false and zero and one. It's going to be zero and one. Circuit won't pass. It's false. It's going to be zero. Okay? For OR statement, so this is and. For OR statement, it is like this. You have a switch, you have a light bulb, what an artist I am, and you have this, and you have this. That's an OR statement, which means if any of them is true, light bulb goes on. So if I have the exact same condition in here, if I have the exact same condition over here, with an OR statement, OR is the bar, okay, right above backslash. With an OR statement, then it means what? Zero OR one, which means one is zero, the other one is true. The result's going to be true. The only way an OR statement can be false is when both of them are false. I think that's it. Yeah, so that's what, wow, look at this. I have a record, 3.15, exactly the time. So that's what we wanted to cover for today. The next day you are coming in, please read the, read the thing for logic and, uh, and, and, uh, and styles. Uh, I'm going to give you questions only on logic. So you have only questions on logic, all right? Have yourself a beautiful day. I have a question. Yes.